Hello, in this episode we'll be making realistic low poly rocks and this method can be used to make several low poly assets and requires minimal artistic skill. This course is part of a much bigger course on gabbit.co.uk where you can go right through from beginner to advanced levels and all the courses are free. So let's begin. I'll start with my cube and I'll subdivide it by pressing Control 4. That just adds a subdivision surface modifier with four subdivisions and I'll apply that. So if I go into edit mode, you can see I've got a nicely and evenly subdivided cube that looks like a sphere. Now this is really great because the topology is fairly even and that's important for later on. So back to object mode and let's go to sculpt mode now. Now it is a sculpting workflow, but again, you don't need to be an artist to do this. I'll make my brush bigger with the F key and dragging to the right, or you can set the radius here. And I'll go to my grab brush and just pull this around so it becomes more like a rock. And you'll notice that symmetry is automatically turned on, so I'll need to turn that off. Symmetry lock and turn it off in the x-axis so I can make it more random. Hold the shift button down to smooth out if ever you need to smooth. And just go around dragging out with my grab brush. And there we go, we've got a rough rock shape, nice and simple. Now what I'm going to add is the multi-resolution modifier. If you want to learn more about this, then do click on the card in the corner now. This is a great modifier for sculpting. So click on the multi-resolution modifier and subdivide it. You can see your faces up here, and as I keep subdividing, that will keep increasing. What you will need to be aware of is how far your processor can take this. And I know I can happily go up to there with screen recording. I can probably go one higher even. So I've got five subdivisions. It does also depend on how detailed your base mesh is as well. So if I go to edit mode, you can see I've got 3000 faces to start with, and that's subdividing it each time. So back into sculpt mode. So at the moment I've got a million and a half faces, and most modern computers can handle that. The great thing about the multi-resolution modifier is that you can go down and up levels without being destructive. So you don't need to apply this. Let's go back to our sculpting brush and I'll just minimize the symmetry. And what I want to use is the sculpt brush. I'm actually going to create a new brush in case we want to use this one again and call this texture. I'll pull this out slightly so you can see all the controls easily. Then I'll go into my texture panel and I'll create a new texture. Then I come across to my texture tab over here and make sure that the brush texture is chosen and it's called texture here so you know you can choose texture over here you can always rename this if you're confused so I'll rename this to rock rock one for now so over here brush rock one now I'm going to open up a brush texture but before doing that I'm going to explain about what type of textures work best so I'm on Google and I've typed in rock brush alpha and these are the types of alpha textures that you want they're black and white, the white bits will come out and the black bits will stay the same. So it's based on the amount of light. So obviously black has no light, pure white would be full light and the gray scale is in between. And these sort of blurry ones are the best sort. Ones like this aren't actually that great within Blender anyway. If you want to create your own, you can get images like this and then blur them. So download a few rock brushes like this, a great place is textures.com under the 3D brushes section. So if I go to this set down here, for example, you can see all these terrific rock brushes and they'll work well. Okay, so back to Blender, I'll open up my brushes. If you need to see your brushes, you can click on the little button here that will display them and I've got some rock brushes here. So I'll click one, press enter. I'm just going to use one for now and it appears over here. So if I start drawing now with that, you can see it is working and not too bad really, but there's a better way we can use this. I'll undo that. Let's scroll down. And if we go to stroke, the default method is space and we're going to change it to anchored. And I find that's really helpful for pulling out detail like this. And already that's looking pretty good. What you can also do is add another brush. So add here. Go over to your texture panel, make sure it's the same brush label, so brush texture, and then open and grab another brush. And if I pull that out, get some lovely effects. 
Now that one's a bit strong, so I'm going to undo that. Always look around at the side and see the effect it's having, and I can bring the strength down for this. And there we go. And if you feel you aren't getting enough detail, and your processor can handle it, go another subdivision level, and it looks like mine can just about handle it. It's an i7-4790, I think. So a bit old, but doing okay. And switch between your textures and drag out some detail. Now, interestingly, on this texture, there seems to be a slight issue. So I'm going to delete that one and choose a different one. You can also smooth out with holding shift, but the higher your subdivision levels, the less it smooths out. So just go all the way around your rock. Watch out for stretching. So if I do this on the side, it will stretch over here. So make sure you've got it right in the middle of your shape and you're pulling out all the time in the middle like this. You can turn your brush as well if you want to turn the texture. Just shift your brush side to side. Okay, so not such a bad rock. You can see slight glitches in the original images I had here. So I'll just smarten those up. What I can also do is go back into object mode as well and choose smooth shading. Now don't panic, it hasn't disappeared. It's just that the modifier, if I go to the modifier, the preview mode is set to zero. And if I start bringing this up, you can see my rock coming back. That's quite clever because it means if you have several objects that you're sculpting, it won't take up processing power on those. And there I'm all the way back up to six and our rock's back. Okay, so this is obviously very high poly with six million faces. So what we're going to need to do is reduce the amount of faces on this. There's a couple of ways of doing this. I'm going to bring down the preview for now so it doesn't make my computer lag. And I'll bring it down to about three. Now I'm going to duplicate this with Shift D and then right click. So there's a duplicate right on top of the old one. This is going to be called Rock LP for low poly and the original is going to be Rock HP for high poly. I'm going to hide the high poly one for now and concentrate on the low poly. So I've clicked on the low poly and it's white so I know it's selected. Now to reduce the polygon count we can bring down the preview but what we have to be careful of is the silhouette. Have a look around and see if the silhouette's drastically changing and that's when it changes drastically. So we're going to keep it on one and then we're going to apply it. Let's go into edit mode and see how many faces we have. That's still quite high poly. So what we can do at this stage is go to the add modifier decimate tool which lowers the poly count and you can see the faces here. You can drag this down and you have to be in object mode to see that so I'm just going to tab into object mode and again look at the silhouette so there's one so it's original 6,000 faces and then I'm dragging it down slowly and seeing the silhouette you can see slight changes but we should be okay there a bit further not too far and you can count the faces here I would say around 1,000 faces should be fine relatively low poly but not too low poly as to lose too much detail you can of course try and go further if you like it's not lost too much of the silhouette there but you may lose a bit of detail at that point so I'm going to go up to a thousand to about there and then apply okay so we've got our rock now you may want to go in to edit mode and just make sure that there's no overlapping vertices that are really close to each other really long thin triangles can cause problems but you can see what I've got here and they're not too bad so you want a fairly even distribution where possible. Okay, back into object mode. And at this point, I need to take the light information from the high poly and put it onto my low poly rock in the form of a normal map. So if you want to look at normal maps and what they do, I've got several tutorials on that and I'll put some worthwhile links in the description. But if you're unsure, you'll see the results of a normal map in the next stages. But first of all, what I need to do is unwrap my low poly so my 3D program knows where to put the material onto the 3D object. So it needs to be unwrapped. Into edit mode, U to unwrap and smart UV project. Make sure you give it a bit of an island margin. 0 0.06 should be fine and press OK. Let's bring out the screen with the UV image editor. 
down to the UV image editor here, and there's our unwrap, which is fine. It's not a brilliant unwrap, but it's okay for this. What I'm also going to bring out is the node editor. Node editor here, and I'll press N to get rid of this panel. Now at the moment, I'm still in Blender Render. You might be in Blender 2.8, and therefore you won't see Blender Render apparently, because that's going. I'm gonna go across to Cycles, and then click on Use Nodes. So what I need to create now is an image texture for the high poly detail to go onto, and that our low poly rock can have as a normal map. So I need to create a new texture down here. I'm going to call this Rock Normals, or Norm for short. And we want it fairly detailed, so I'm going to double the resolution to 2048, and then press OK. So here's our blank texture. Now what I want to do is bring it into the node editor. So Shift A to add, texture, image texture, bring it in and make sure I've got rock normals selected, rock normals there. Now with this selected, that becomes the active image. And to make sure it's the active image, just tab out of edit mode, back in, and it should appear here if it's the active image. But it should be the active image because we've got it selected in the node editor. At this point, we can bring back our high poly. So I'll make that visible with the eye tool here. And you can see they're right on top of each other. And this won't work if they're not right on top of each other, so make sure they are. You can do that by pressing N and resetting their location here. And if you have rotated it, reset it there on both models. So now the exciting part is baking. We go to our render tab and baking is right down at the bottom. So there is bake, if I scroll down a bit more and I'll minimize the other panels. Now at the moment, its bake type is set to combined. We need to change that to normals. Don't worry too much about all the different things here. The main thing is that we're going from the selected to the active. We're gonna tick that, and so we're going from the rock high poly, so select that, to the rock low poly, so shift select that. And that's selected to active. Whatever you select last is the active. Now rocks are quite rounded objects, and the ray distance goes out like this, so we can set the ray distance to one. Now that can be a confusing item, but generally you can just push it right up to one and it will work okay. The only time it will be difficult is if you've got large crevices and the ray distance then overlaps each other. But you learn that as you go along, and you learn what works. At this point, just quickly double check that your image texture is selected, and that it's in here with rock norms and you should be able to press bake. And we can see the texture bake process happening here. Depending on how high poly your rock is, that's how long it will take. And there's our image. Now the important thing at this stage is to press save. So image, save as image, and it should default to wherever your project is saved. I haven't actually saved this project yet, which is a bit naughty, but I'll just put it on my desktop for now. So make sure your image is saved. Now let's take a quick closer look at the image. Shift spacebar to maximize the screen. And generally, if you've got a bluish looking image, it's worked well. There's glitches if it's too red or there's bright greens, but this has done a nice job. And that isn't even a glitch because it's overlapping my UV, so that's fine. And that's a lovely, nice, normal map. So back to my default mode and we can actually hide our high poly now. We don't need that anymore. And with our low poly selected, we need to hook the normal map up to the normals. I'm going to change the default texture, the diffuse texture, to the principal shader. Shift S if you have the Node Wrangler add-on, or just add the principal shader, delete the old one, and insert the new one. And I want to hook this up to the normals. Another problem that you might find is that you forget to change this to non-color data. Make sure it's changed to non-color data so that Blender will understand it's a normal map. Then, Shift A, Vector, Normal Map. Put the color into the color and the normals into the normals. Now when we press Shift Z, you can see that detail is now on top of my low poly rock. Here it is without it. And when I plug my normal map in, it takes that high poly detail and puts it onto my rock. At this point, you can do some editing to your rock to make it look nice. And in the next episode, I'll talk about successfully painting your rock, again, without any real artistic ability. So I've added a plane, quickly changed my lamp to a sun lamp, and I'm going to put an HDRI in the background. Then I'll just change 
some of the aspects of my rock, give it a bit more shininess, and for now just a greyish texture. Now if you feel this needs a bit more bumpiness, it may just be that you need to change the shadows in your lights, but you can turn the strength up of your normal map as well and give it a real sort of rocky look. Okay, so in the next episode we'll be painting, which is a much quicker process and you really see the rock come to life. Thanks for watching.